Hey there. Oh, new face walks into my store. And you're not even screaming yet. Very polite. You let me know if anything catches your fancy. Did you say something about people screaming at you? That's right. Some newcomers have never seen a ghoul before. Can't handle a friendly face, I say. So you need some supplies? What's it like, you know, being a ghoul? Well, it's a lot worse when people always ask you about it all the time. But I guess I can't blame them. On the upside, I look pretty good. For being over 220 years old. Now, were you buying anything? Wait, you're 220 years old? Okay, okay. It's more like 270 years. But don't go blabbing that to everyone. Being a ghoul means you live a long time. You stop counting birthdays. Do you know what it's like being that old? What's it like? It's like being in a time warp sometimes. Hundreds of years between you and the 20 somethings running around here. Not that you'd know what that's like, would you? Actually, I do. <laughs> well, now you're just making fun of me. If you were as old as I was, you would have been around since before the war. So let's hear it. Come on. Tell me what the world was like before the war, if you're so ancient. What do you remember? Oh no, that's cheating. You first. It was pretty much what we have now. Just with less rust. <laughs> yeah, that's true, isn't it? Well, you're either the most well-preserved ghoul I've ever seen, or you're the second best bullshitter and good neighbor. <laughs> So, what do you remember about the past? Oh, sweetie, I was an angry young woman back then. Thought the world was sick and wouldn't give me my due. Then it all ended, and well, I ended in a way, becoming a ghoul. Maybe when you get to be my age, everything starts to look like fate. Anyway, I like your story better, whether or not it's true. It's the truth. All of it. You know, if you haven't already, you should check out the Hotel Rexford. There's another pre-war ghoul hanging around there. Well, we should get back to business. What are you picking up? What kind of things do you sell? Oh, a bit of everything. Canned beans to cans. I try to take every weird bit of junk the caravans are willing to trade. So chances are you'll find something to your liking here. Ready to take a look? Let's see what you... Well, hello. Everything here is guaranteed to injure, maim, or kill at your discretion. Except me. I only kill when I want to. Who... what are you? I'm a woman, baby. Can't you tell? Oh, of course you are. It's just... all those metal plates. You're a robot, right? A very womanly... Robot? Was that a pickup line? I've heard better. Now, are you buying anything? I've got a few minutes to browse. Murder and mayhem at a discount. Now, I know you all are doing your own thing, but I don't want anyone here to forget what matters. Hey, Daisy, glad you can make it. How's my favorite girl doing? Didn't I see you on a date with Morowski the other day? Huh. He wishes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right, we're getting off track. What was I saying? Oh, that's right. What matters? We freaks gotta stick together. And the best way to stick together is to keep an eye out for what drives us apart. You feel me? Yeah, you tell it like it is, Hancock. Now, what out there in our big, friendly commonwealth would want to drive us apart? What kind of twisted, unneighborly boogeyman would want to hurt our peaceful community? The Institute and their sins! That's right. Who said that? Come on up to my office later. You've earned yourself some jet. The Institute. They're the real enemy. Not the Raiders. Not the super mutants. Not even those tools over How you doing? City. I don't know, Hancock. Hey, not too close, Mr. Tough Guy. Okay. Hell of a load you're carrying. Better sell some to Daisy before someone swipes it. 
Smell that? That's freedom. Better keep your iron strapped on. Friendly advice. Pushing you away with no reason. We all know who's behind that kind of shit. And the only way to stop it is to stick together. They can't control us if we're not afraid. Now, who's scared of the Institute? Not, not us. us! And which town in the Commonwealth should the Institute not fuck with? Good, good neighbor. neighbor! And who's in charge of good neighbor? Hancock! Of the people! For the people! Hancock says newcomers are welcome in the third rail. Go on in. Enjoy your stay. No need to feel like a stranger. What, another one of you mercs looking for McCready? He's in the back room. God, I love this song. Magnolia can really sing. Only reason I come here. That thing wasted. Did you come in just for the beer Boy, and cigarettes? Beer. You ain't buying beer, you ain't buying. A broken down. Who's the singer? That is Magnolia. Flower of the third rail. Anything you want to know about her other than that is her business. Now, you gonna order? The third rail. Is this your place? What? Nah, God. Place is Hancock's. Charlie just keeps the floor clean and drinks dirty. <laughs> so, you buying a what? So, Hancock's the owner? That's right. Owner and mayor of this whole bloody town. Trust me, never get on his bad side. Stay clear of his bodyguard. So, what's your poison? Hancock has a bodyguard? Yeah. A redhead with the condescending stare. Trust me, Cub, something about her ain't right. Not that I'd ever admit saying that. I'm trying to sell drinks here. You in? What's the word around town? Well, they say there's a newcomer around here who doesn't understand that I'm a bartender, not a damn news pop. Now, are you gonna drink? Let's see what you got. Nothing watered down. Now that you're lifted up, got a proposition for you. I need a dirty boy to do some dirty, dirty work. Blood on the pavement, bodies in the ground, that kind of thing. Interested? I want to hear the details first. I got a certain anonymous client who's paying top dollar for a clean-up job. Three locations. Everyone inside. No witnesses. Only catch. It's all in town. The old warehouse, so I can't use my regulars. Too noticeable. That's where you come in. The job's 200 caps. Payment after it's done. And don't worry. I'll know when it is. I don't do work unless I know who's paying the bills. All right, Gov. Not like it's a big secret who I represent. Mayor Hancock is fronting the caps. Internal political struggle. You know how it is. Look, it's nothing you need to be concerned about. Just clear out the warehouses and get paid. Simple. It's random murder. I'm out. Think you're too good for this town, mate? You're not. Shove off, then. That's right, good neighbor. I'm the one you're looking for. Excuse me, miss? Hmm? Now, what's the matter, handsome? Don't tell me you didn't like the song. I've never heard that song before. Who wrote it? I did. Everything I sing is an original. Now, there's something special about you, isn't there? But don't tell me. Let me guess. It's your eyes. Quick and intense. I bet you never miss a detail, hmm? <laughs> you like what you see? So what brings a man like you to my part of town? What do you think? We're all trying to forget something, are we? 
I think you and I are going to get along. So it's my turn to answer questions, right? What can I do for you? What's your story? How'd you end up singing here? Oh, I flew into town like any songbird does, on a heavy wind with a wounded wing. Mm, well, this place has a stage I needed to sing, and Whitechapel Charlie needed customers, so here we are. Was there anything else? Whitechapel Charlie's been here a long time, I take it? Well, he never talks too much about his past. <laughs> Neither do I, really. I guess that's why we get along. You should get to know him, though. Order a drink first. He always wants to talk business after someone's had a few. And was that all? You need anything else? Come on. Tell me the whole story. Who were you before all this? You really want to know? It's all in the song everything I am. Now, can I help you with anything else? Nothing. I'll leave you to it. Well, you know where to find me. This way. Damn. I was wondering how long it would take your bloodhounds to track me down, Winlock. It's been almost three months. Don't tell me you're getting rusty. Should we take this outside? It ain't like that. I'm just here to deliver a message. In case you forgot, I left the gunners for good. Yeah, I heard. But you're still taking jobs in the Commonwealth. That isn't going to work for us. I don't take orders from you. Not anymore. So why don't you take your girlfriend and walk out of here while you still can? What? Winlock, tell me we don't have to listen to this shit. Listen up, McCready. The only reason we haven't filled your body full of bullets is that we don't want a war with Good Neighbor. See, we respect other people's boundaries. We know how to play the game. It's something you never learned. Glad to have disappointed you. <laughs> you can play the tough guy all you want. But if we hear you're still operating inside gunner territory, all bets are off. You got that? You finished? Yeah. We're finished. Come on, Barnes. Look, pal. If you're preaching about the Atom or looking for a friend, you've got the wrong guy. If you need a hired gun, then maybe we can talk. Maybe. Why don't you tell me who those guys were first? A couple of morons looking to climb the ladder of success by stepping on everyone else on the way up. Shouldn't be surprised, though. That's how it goes when you run with the Gunners. Never heard of the Gunners. Who are they? They're one of the biggest gangs in the Commonwealth. Got a rep for being crazy. You know, so tightly wound, you think they were a cult or something? Stuck with them for a while because the money was good, but they never fit in. That's why I made a clean break and started flying solo. Now what about you? How do I know I won't end up with a bullet in my back? Are you always this suspicious? Hey, you approached me. And frankly, I'm taking a huge risk being out here in the Commonwealth in the first place. So I'm not about to leave anything to chance. Which brings me back to my original question. Can I trust you? Hold on. What kind of risk are you talking about? I already told you way too much. I need to learn to keep my big mouth shut. Look, I'm tired of playing 20 questions. So I'll cut you a deal right now. 250 caps. Up front. And there's no room for bargaining. What do you say? Let me think about it. It's not like the meter's running. Take your time. Tell his mother. Hey, just your friendly neighborhood watch. Shooting down Institute spies as they crop up. Are you going to hang out in the lobby all day again? Or are you actually going to go down and do some work? Being available to the customers is work. It's not all about cooking chems, Claire. It's not all about sampling those chems either. Maybe if you stopped using, you could focus. What? Where's the fun in cooking it if you ain't using it? I just clean up my mistake. Here. Oh man, someone new! You need some jet man, home brewed, reasonable prices? You have any work? Yeah, actually, you might be perfect. You know the gunners, right? The high-end mercenaries? Well, a few of them were talking about scavenging around that old hallucinogen building. I mean, just think about that name. There's gotta be some shit there that's out of this world. You get me something, I pay you 200 caps. All right, Fred. We have a deal. You're the best. The absolute best. Hey, Fred. You 
I love Nice. What it used to be. And it ain't used to hey be there. much. Before you even start, let's get to the point. We have rooms, one room specifically. Payment due up front. Can you tell me a bit about this hotel? Oh, why do they always have questions? The Hotel Rexford used to be a grand establishment. We even had guests that didn't throw up all over the floor. But now the only people who come by are looking for somewhere to nurse a hangover or shoot up chems. So, still want a room? Who owns this place? Mr. Morowski. Oh, you should have seen him in his day. This place used to be flowing with high-end chems, beautiful clients, and oh, the parties. But now he just stews in the back office and disgraces his parents' memory. I swear, if they knew how far he's fallen, they'd die all over again. So why don't you rent a room before I get worked up? Tell me more about this Morowski character. Oh, why bother? He's worthless. The other big names caught him with his pants down, and now he just has this ratty hotel. That's the way good neighbor operates. The strong make it to the top until someone stronger kicks them down. Now are you buying this room or not? Tell me a bit about yourself, Claire. I have been working in this hotel for over 40 years, and this is not how I imagined spending my retirement. Now are you done being nosy or are you getting a room? Not interested. Fine. Hey there. You're new around good neighbor, if I'm not mistaken. What do you think of the place? Why do you ask? Just trying to get a feel for you. Ain't exactly the safest neighborhood, so I like to know who's gonna cause trouble and who's gonna end it. Name's Rufus. I do repairs around here. Keep the robots running, sell a bit of scrap, that sort of thing. I'm usually here or drinking that swill Charlie slinging at the third rail. Looking for parts? I also might have a job for you if you're interested. What's the job? Don't know if you've had the beer down at the third rail, but I swear Charlie must have found it in a sewer. Found this hollow tape while doing repairs at the Rexford. Delivery notice for a brewing machine. Pre-war. Thing is, it was never delivered. Well, with all the bombs and all. Done some asking around, and I think it might still be intact. Which is where you come in. What's the catch? The usual. Place it's in as an empty. Might have to shoot your way in. Think you can get a hold of that brewing machine for me? Isn't brewing equipment going to be kind of large? Usually it is, but apparently this machine has been miniaturized, so that shouldn't be a problem. Are you going to take the job? I'm in. Let's do it. Great. So, the brewing machine is in the basement of an old bar called the Shamrock Tap House. When you leave town, make your way around east till you hit Atlantic. Great big green sign. Bring it back here when you're done. 